This is No BS Job Search Advice Radio, episode 1263. I'm Jeff Alpin, the Big Game Hunter, and welcome. Monday morning, and I'm playing a little bit of catch up today. And today's show is about one of those classic scenarios applying for two different jobs at the same firm. I think you'll like this show. Hope you do find it helpful, and I hope you give it a great review. And by the way, I released a new class on Skillshare yesterday about answers to tough interview questions. Um, It's about 15 or so questions that will help you. I also have another class um, with the answers to the top 10 questions that you should answer or be prepared to answer on any interview. Look for my classes on Skillshare. They are good. They're video classes. And in addition to mine, there are thousands of other classes you can take there if you become a premium member. If you use the show notes, you'll get two months for free. There's a link in the show notes. You'll get two months for free rather than the one month that the site offers. So again, Skillshare.com using the show notes. And now let's get going. Here's the next question. Does applying to two different jobs at one company significantly lower your chance of getting each one? Now, I want to continue on here. I'm interested in two different areas, and they outline the two different groups. Would it be a bad idea to apply to both of these positions at one company? How does the process usually work with processing applications? Would it be going through the same recruiter? So, without outlining the specific jobs, I simply start off by answering the question as to whether or not it reduces your chances with the answer. Well, it depends. Now, I interviewed someone on Job Search Radio not long ago who was a corporate HR recruiter. And he commented that the applicant tracking systems are now set up to recognize people who were frequent appliers. So in his case, which was a medical facility in the mid-Atlantic states, often they get applications from people for multiple positions and they're not really qualified for them. So the system starts to block them uh, for the simple reason that they're just nothing more than a spammer to them. So yes, you could say, but they may hit on one of them, but they're not paying attention. They just want to work at this company and they don't really care what the impact is on the person who's reading their resume. They just want to work for the company. And that isn't what firms are looking for. They're looking for people to fill individual jobs. So multiple submissions can have an adverse impact unless you're going directly to hiring managers. So if you're applying through the applicant tracking system, you're starting to lower your value because in this particular case, person was applying for two different types of roles. Although they may have two different recruiters, the system that they're applying through is going to note that they've applied Uh, through their system for two different types of position. They're going to look at the resume and say, okay, this is the same person, and um, they don't really fit either of these roles, or they fit this role. Why do they apply for this one? Let's get rid of it. Or they may just simply say, spammer, or they may just simply look at both and go, huh, and get rid of you. So it can have an adverse impact. It can have a neutral impact at worst, I'm sorry, at best, and can have a negative impact at worst. Because again, here are the scenarios. Huh? Okay, let's take him for this one and reject her for that, the other one. Just trying to be gender neutral there. Or they can go, this is a spammer. And there's no situation where they're going to go, fabulous, we got their application, their their resume for two different jobs, yeah. And again, the probability is two different recruiters are coordinating it, so there's going to be internal friction. So they may have to figure out who's going to be the primary interviewer, who's going to be the secondary. And remember, corporate recruiters are now being evaluated based upon outcomes as well. So it's not just simply you getting hired, which I know is all you care about, but for them, they've got metrics they have to live up to, and you could be wasting someone's time that can be better served elsewhere. So continuing on, how does the process usually work with processing applications? Would it be going through the same recruiter and address that? The fact that you're submitting to two different groups turns you into an amateur. And as an amateur, 
you know, you're sending a signal to the employer that you don't really have a career yet, that you're trying to sort it out. After all, you can be interested in one area or the other. And the fact that you're leaving it to the winds, to the ether, to sort it out for you. Am I lucky enough to get this one? Or do I have to stick in the old uh, paradigm? You know, sends messages to employers. Even if it's the old paradigm, they say to themselves, okay, she's looking for something completely different than what she's look, what she's doing now. They're not going to be, she's not going to be happy in this old job. See where I'm going from here? It's more complicated than just simply, is it going to the same recruiter? It's the impact of the message that that recruiter is left to interpret and left to their own devices. Here's what, what recruiters do. They pause. They leave the window open. They go to something else. They don't call because they're still processing this, processing these conflicting messages that you're sending. Usually when they pause, they hesitate for lengthy periods of time. When they hesitate for lengthy periods of time, they re-review the resume, they don't act on it, and ultimately they reject. Can it turn out differently? Absolutely. Well, how will it probably turn out? Not so good for you. You're better off zeroing in on one thing that you want, period. One thing you, that you want at a particular firm and going from there. So that's today's show. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, here are a few ways to get even more from me. First of all, visit my website, www.thebiggamehunter.us. I have several thousand blog posts there that you can watch, listen to, or read to help you find your next job. If you want the best of my advice, join JobSearchCoachingHQ.com, where I've curated my information with a focus on interviewing. If you have a few questions, contact me through the Magnify app for iOS. That's Magnify with an I at the end or PrestoExperts.com where you can call me. Schedule a specific time with me through chat on Magnify or by connecting with me on LinkedIn at LinkedIn.com forward slash IN forward slash The Big Game Hunter. Once we're connected on LinkedIn, you can message me about coaching you, speaking with me about a resume or LinkedIn profile critique, help with a salary negotiation, my trusted advisor services, as well as scheduling me through for Magnify or for PrestoExperts.com. Like you, I don't work for free. You can also take my classes on Skillshare and become a premium member using the link in the show notes and receive two months for free instead of just the one that the site offers. Skillshare offers thousands of courses, not just simply mine. It is a great resource in a variety of different areas. Subscribe to my other podcast, which is called Job Search Radio. This one is number one in Apple Podcasts. Job Search Radio is number two. Subscribe to both. You will get great information seven days a week from this show, six days a week from the other. Lastly, I want to encourage you to join my group on Facebook called Career Angles. It's free to the first 500 people who join and is focused on helping you do better at work. Information is shared daily and we're building a supportive group there to provide advice and counsel during difficult times. Again, the group on Facebook is called Career Angles. I'll be back tomorrow with more. In the meantime, have a great day. Be great.